What's going on everyone? Uh, welcome back to another video. And today, I wanted to bring you my most special kendama that I have. This is the kendama right here. It is a Crown Deluxe and it is my best looking kendama out of all of them. I've only played this once in my entire life. The string is all wrapped up nice nice because look how beautiful this thing is. You cannot deny that this thing is really beautiful. It has a beautiful walnut finish to the Ken. It has an absolutely beautiful, uh, wow, I really messed this thing up. Um, <laughs> I have a really beautiful colorway to it. It's just so simplistic, but this, like, the spike is not even, like, messed up at all. But yeah, this is, um, the Crown Deluxe. It is just very simplistic, but also very beautiful in my eyes. I got this one, um, I got, I went into this huge, like, spending spree for Crown. Like, I literally bought, like, five of them at a time, and this was one of them. It was really cheap, actually, but, um, it was really good. I had to buy it. It was really good colorway. Really nice uh, finish to it, I would say. I never play it because this thing literally sucks. Like, it, it literally just falls off. There is absolutely no grip to this thing whatsoever. It is just a nice colorway on it. And um, the, the cup sizes are literally like, not even the size of a thumb. They're really, really small. You can't really do tricks with it. Anyways, so why not just keep it as kind of like a souvenir. Kind of keep it as like my showcase uh, kendama. Let everyone know that I have it for a reason. Um, this kendama also is one of kind. It is not not like it's the only one made, but I'm almost positive that this is the only crown kendama that has come out with a walnut finish for its ken. With that being said, is you will only be able to find it through the deluxe versions of crown. There's only a couple of them that are also made from different ones of uh, woods. For example, I'm almost positive one of them is made from a um, from an ash. And um, this one is made from a walnut. And then the other one, I can't really quite put my finger on it. But I'm sure it's made from something exquisite, as uh, people would say. But yeah, so I haven't really played with this one a whole, whole butt ton. I kind of really wanted to go over in this video more so um, down with tips and tricks. And how to like land tricks more fluently with it. Um, when you're doing a lot of tricks for, let's say, the Ken side, when you're holding the Ken and you're doing a lot of tricks like this, it's way more easier than holding the Tama itself and trying to land tricks like this because that requires a lot more balance and stability than landing a trick like this. Because if you really think about it, it's a divoted hole. Something's going to land. It's, it's really not going to fall out unless you literally make it fall out. With that being said, you can do a lot of flip tricks with it and land it pretty fairly, like, equally and fairly. The more and more you try it. Now, I'm not saying go out there and just like just throw it up and try to catch it. It still takes a lot of practice and time and patience for you to actually learn how to like flip it and catch it perfectly in time and in sync. And what makes those tricks so cool is that you can add a lot to them. Now, not only can you juggle, there's this trick that I am going to learn someday, maybe in the near future, maybe, <laughs> but it should have been in the past by now. But um, you can actually flip it and then you can tap it in the air and then you can land it right there that's called juggling that's definitely one of the masterful steps that you learn in kendama but for right now i'm just trying to show you guys what you could do for when you're trying to land your big cup your small cup and your base cup now when it comes to the tama holding of it what you want to do is you want to try to keep a nice equal balance in between not only your knees, but you also kind of want to have a nice balance in your like wrist and in your hand. Because when you're controlling a kendama like this, you want to have a control in your wrist. And it's really hard sitting down because you're going to need your knees for it. To try and like sway it and predict that movement for wherever it goes. But those tricks, um, you'll learn within time. It takes a lot of practice. It took me nearly a year to finally figure them out and see how they work. The first trick I ever learned was a lighthouse. And the lighthouse is really some place that you just pop it up, land it, and then you just hold it. Because this is like the hardest trick for it to go anywhere. You can honestly just hold it for as long as you want like this here. And you honestly don't even have to have that much balance or stability while doing it. And 
finally the the crazier tricks come with like everything combined now you can um do a lot of uh hand switch switching so like you can pop it up and then you can switch to the ball while it's popped up and then have it land right here that's another masterful trick that i have yet to learn i'm going to learn at some point and i will try to make it really cool but for now i'm just sticking to the basics the beginner to intermediates it's been a um I don't know it's been a long ride for me i guess you could say i've been playing for a long time i would say about five years but have i been playing consistently for those five years of course not no but do i want to pick it up and try to learn more of it of course i, I think kendama is really fun i think it's probably one of the best toys out there other than maybe like the rubik's cube because it honestly takes a lot of time and patience and knowledge for you to actually try to learn these tricks and try to pick them up and do really well with them now, I'm not saying to go out there, buy the most expensive kendama, bang the crap out of it, and then try to say, like, you're the best within the one week. It's not, it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. There's pro players coming up with new tricks every day. And I think that's the fun of it. I think while you're trying to learn all these tricks that are out already, I think the best thing you can do is just try to make up new tricks. Have fun with it. Try to get fluent with it. Try to become one with it, I guess you could say. It's really fun when you can just go out there on a nice sunny day and just have fun with it. Not try to get anything too basic. Learn in your own time and then you can like start recording with it and try to post it on social media. Get the attention of these big named uh, companies. And see if you can even become a pro yourself. But it will take time. It will take a lot of practice. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, this is the Chrome Deluxe. My best looking one and I hope you guys enjoy. Mm -hmm.